Hi everyone. So we managed to get our hands on a Tesla Model 3 and an awesome owner named Tony who agreed to spend the better part of a day filming with us and talking about his car. Tony, he really loves his Tesla. He loves it so much that his wife ended up making him a custom Tesla shirt, which you know, you should check out. It's probably just as cool as our awesome channel. Shh. It's probably just as cool as our channel shirts. Tony also loves learning about his car and sharing what he's learned with others. So we can't do this car review justice with just a 10 minute video. So we're going to do something a little bit different and we're going to post it in multiple episodes. In this video, Jono chats with Tony about why he opted for an electric car, how there's practically no servicing required. They also talk about Tesla roadside assistance and they have a good look around the outside of the car, including the boot and the frunk, which apparently is Tesla lingo for the front trunk and then the sunroof including why a sunroof is actually probably a better option for that car. In the next videos we'll go in depth about charging, cost of owning a Tesla Model 3, whether you can actually drive a Tesla Model 3 all around Australia, safety, noise, how to purchase a Tesla here. You can't actually haggle. Issues, warranty, build quality. To keep it short, this is going to be our most in-depth owner drive review yet. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Tony and Jono. Check out their shirts. Okay, hello Tony. Hey, how are you going? Good, good. Thanks for joining us on owner drive today. No worries, thank you. Very excited to learn about um, the car you've got here, the Tesla Model 3. Yep. Otherwise known as Merlin by the looks, what was the inspiration for the number plate? Um, so Merlin came about um, for a few reasons. Um, one is the uh, rocket engines uh, on the bottom of the SpaceX rockets are called Merlin engines. Sure. And because Merlin goes like a rocket, he had to be named after a rocket. Um, but it's also magical to drive. So. Yeah, oh great, great. That's a very good number plate for it. Um, now can you talk us through what made you take the leap to a, to a Tesla. So I know the uptake in Australia has been a lot less than in say European or, or countries or the US. What made you take that leap? Well, I, I had a diesel car before this one and um, the running costs of it were getting quite high. The fuel costs were high. Um, I was sick of paying the man all the time every time I pulled up at a, a service station and, and I sort of wanted to think about something different and I was looking at a hybrid, but my son was very keen on um, uh, Elon Musk and all things Tesla. And he said, oh, you should take one for a drive. And I must admit, I was a bit skeptical. Uh, I didn't know how far you could go between charges and all of that and um, how long the batteries would last. But after I took one for a test drive, I had to have one. Well, first of all, can we, can we have a look sort of under the bonnet and within the car and see, yep. see what's there? So everything in the car is driven um, when you're out of the car by an app. Um, and so I oh, can open the, the uh, front bonnet and in Tesla language, that's the front trunk or the frunk, okay? okay. If you're in the UK, it's the for boot. Yeah, because it's the front boot, but sure. we call it the frunk. So here, um, this is uh, the frunk at the moment. Um, and I've just got a couple of things in there. I've got to do some drop offs later, but um, basically the um, motor itself uh, for the front motor, and this is a long range uh, version, so it's got two motors, a smaller motor at the front and then a larger motor at the rear. And the motor sits underneath this and then sort of behind this point here above the motor is all the um, uh, AC and power steering and all that. Oh, sort of okay. Stuff. So you do see some of the traditional things you see in another car in behind here. Yes. Yeah. So this would come away, would it? Yeah, so this comes out uh, and then you can do your servicing down here. There's a 12 volt battery. So the 12 volt battery does, um, you know, like your door openings and the, the uh, boot release and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, the only thing that you have to service on the car is that little um, cap there to put some windscreen washer fluid in. Um, there's no other um, servicing on the car. There's no oil to change. There's no, no other fluids or whatever. I think there is um, brake fluid, obviously, but you hardly ever use the brakes. Um, and we'll talk about that a bit later. Um, so yeah, there's just no, there's there's very little to service on the vehicle when you're going. So, so a standard is that a standard lead acid battery that they still yes, need yeah, in yeah. addition to the lithium yeah, so, batteries? Oh, that's um, interesting. What happens at night? The car goes to sleep um, if it's not being charged, um, and when it goes to sleep, basically the 
uh, high voltage connectors um, open and that battery becomes isolated and then the car goes into a deep sleep and so you don't lose much charge then out of it. I see, I see, excellent. And the brakes I imagine, so it would still be a standard hydraulic setup? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's still power brakes and um, you can see the front calipers there um, just on the wheels. So. But then they are used for regeneration, aren't they? Um, no, the motors are used for regeneration. Oh, okay. So the motors themselves slow you down. So this, when you're driving it, is pretty much one foot driving nearly all the time. Yeah. Uh, it'd be very rare um, to use the brake. Um, you might use it if you misjudge when you take your foot off the accelerator and so on, but it's a completely different driving experience by driving with one pedal. Can you yeah. walk me through the rest of the exterior. So this is a traditional boot out back? Yeah, yeah. So um, this um, boot here, um, it's manual at the moment, but you can get a power lift, but it's quite long. And then um, there's no spare tire with the car. Okay. So um, that area there is all available in a sort of wheel well, if you want. Yep. Um, but it's interesting that I think uh, a lot of times now, European cars aren't delivered with spare tires. No. Um, and, you know, I was a bit surprised that this didn't even come with a space saver, but obviously it saves weight as well. So I suppose that's why they do it. Um, I have bought a spare wheel. So when we go on a long drive, I'll probably take it. But I've also got um, compressors and um, uh, wheel repair kits as well. Here. Okay, so you're pretty well set up. So say, what, what, what does Tesla expect you to do ordinarily if you get a flat tire? Yeah, their, their view is that um, you should call their roadside assist. Uh, and um, the roadside assist will be able to come to you, but I also have RACQ roadside assist. So, um, I don't know if I'd trust a company based in Fremont in California to, you know, come and rescue me when I'm out back of uh, Queensland. Absolutely. So you, you haven't had to call on their services at all? No, no, no. Um, but to be honest, I'd, we can talk about the servicing um, with Tesla later because there is a bit of concern about um, their reliability, et cetera. And, and um, uh, servicing uh, when you take your car in for service, um, but I've found them to be excellent. So, okay. Yes. How about this roof here? So this is um, this is fully glass up top. Yeah. So it's fully glass all the way right from here right through to the front bonnet. So does it open up at all? Or no, no, no. So it's just it's fixed. And again, that was something that was interesting for me is that um, is that safe? Um, and actually, it's stronger than a metal roof. Um, obviously, it doesn't have as much give, but it actually adds a lot to the structural stability of the so car. So it could take a few few hits because things do drop on your roof sometimes. Yeah, it's yep. not going to be cracking on you or anything like that. No, no. Some people have had cracked windscreens and cracked roofs. Um, uh, in that hailstorm in uh, Canberra a couple of years ago, there was a couple with a um, smashed uh, roofs, but. Uh, most of the time it's been fine. You know, maybe if your hail's about cricket ball bigger, then you might be in trouble, but an ordinary car would be too, so. Okay, and what about the heat? Does the heat tend to, the sun tend to go in there and heat things up? No, it's it's um, very heavily tinted. Um, and that was again in, in Queensland, whether I was something I was concerned about. Um, I got a, I've got a, a sunshade for it. And uh, when we go on long drives, I might put it up just because of the glare more than anything. But even so, with it so heavily tinted, you don't usually worry. Um, what you do find is you can feel the heat, but it's only about that far from the roof. So it doesn't tend to warm the whole car up. So.